Hi, my name is Ted and welcome to my YouTube channel, which is aimed at astronomy and astrophotography. I'm just going to do a little brief history about myself if you haven't watched my intro video. I'm an amateur astronomer and amateur astrophotographer as well. Uh, I just got into taking pictures of the night sky about a year ago, so it's very new to me as well. Uh, I am a professional photographer by nature, which but taking pictures of people and pets and nature is a lot easier than doing the night sky. But however, it is fun and it's very challenging. This is a very expensive hobby, so my channel is geared to doing a lot of reviews on different products, whether it be name brand products or cheap products, it doesn't really matter. I want to get them out there so people know what's good and what's not good, you know, what they might like to use or not use, and whether it's good for observing only or doing imaging. So it's kind of what I'm trying to do here with my channel. So with that being said, I'm going to go on to the review of this filter. Um, I'm going to be doing the Astronomic EOS clip filter. This one's for my Canon 70D. It's a crop censored APS-C. Uh, they do make them for full frame and they also make them for eyepiece and they have various different sizes and different types of filters. They don't just carry the CLS, they carry the H-Alpha, UHC, and, and quite a few others that might interest you. But today I'm going to do it on the CLS filter. But before I do that, I want to also explain something about the DSLR cameras and why it's important to probably have a filter like this. Um, for starters, if you look at a DSLR camera, the, the sensors in this is very, um, how do you say, very sensitive to light, meaning that it does pick up a lot of light. It even picks up light that shouldn't be in pictures, but unfortunately, that's what it does. Um, the other issue with DSLR cameras is that if you're taking pictures of the deep space objects at nighttime, unfortunately, because it's dark and everything's so far away, you have to use higher ISOs and sometimes even longer exposures so with that, it causes what is known as heat noise. So with a combination of heat noise and light pollution in the sky, you kind of really get a crappy image. At least I think so. Uh, if you've ever taken a picture of the night sky, you'll see like a reddish tint over your, uh, over your picture. And it does kind of look bad. Now, you can touch it up in Photoshop. It'll take you a really long time. Uh, I remember spending about four hours on a shot once, and it still didn't look that good. So I called... I'm not sorry, called I wrote to the team members over there at Astronomic and I explained that I didn't have a modded camera and I wanted to get better images of the, the night sky and deep space objects. So they recommended the CLS filter. So I went with it because I wanted to see it. Plus it, it was a good opportunity for me to do a review on it as well. What the CLS filter does is it brings out the contrast between the background and the object, meaning it makes the, the, the background darker. So it's really, really good. It also has a wider transmission curve so than most of the other filters, such as the UHC filter. Uh, in simple terms, uh, it allows more light in and it gives you your stars to be brighter and also very sharper. Uh, basically, it blocks out the most of the artificial light. Um, so what the CLS stands for is a light suppression filter, meaning it blocks out unnatural light and light pollution. Uh, the CLS filter also blocks out, um, I'm sorry, blocks out the spectral lines of mercury and sodium vapors from the lamps. And if you're not familiar with the street lamps, that's pretty much what it's producing. It's like a gas and it's all emitted into the air. And basically what this does is it blocks it out. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it, at first I would say, I, I thought in my head that it doesn't block out all of it. That is it, because when I read the description online, it did say most of it, but we'll get to that in a minute. The good thing about it is uh, it, did, it does a lot more than I thought it would, you know? Uh, it definitely made my backgrounds darker. It definitely brought out the contrast of the stars. And I did a couple of shots with it because, like I said, it was raining and it's been cloudy and it's windy. So I tried to get my unit out there as, as quick as I could and do a couple of test shots. Now, mind you none, this telescope is not a telescope for astrophotography. It's not. Uh, it has a hard time focusing when it comes to stuff like that. You can observe it and it comes out great if you're just doing, you know, nighttime observing. So with that being said, I don't want you, when you see my picture, I don't want to say, oh, you have a little egg shape in it. This is the reason. And not to mention, I didn't do a precise polar alignment. I did a quick one star alignment and just to track it enough to take a very quick, simple exposure. So I can show you the detail of what this filter does. Again, when I first got it and I, I was, I was thinking about it and I was thinking, do I really want to get this? 
would it be worth it? You know, because it retails for $129. Now I know some of you are going to probably say, well, it's very steep. Well, I think when you see the images, I think you're going to be like, huh, maybe it is worth it. Uh, and I don't regret it now. You know, when I put the money out, now that I've seen the image results of what this can do, and I know once I start doing even longer exposures, I'm going to probably get a lot even better images than what I got now. Again, it was just for a test. So here again, we have the Astronomic EOS APS-C clip filters, the CLS, CLS one, which is a light suppression filter. Um, I'm also going to show you how to put it in. Uh, and if you have an older camera body, most likely it'll just snap right into place. If you have a newer Canon body like I do, uh, you might have to adjust the um, little tension springs on the bottom. I'm going to show you how to do that, and I'll also put in again in the warning if you don't have to. I say test it first. If it doesn't snap into place, then most likely you have a newer body. Um, so with that being said, I will now go on and show you some of the um, pictures that I took. I only took two sets of pictures, one of the Orion Nebula, and the other one was the M45 Pleiades. I think that was the... Actually, that's how you pronounce the name, I think. So, and I'll show you some of those images. Oh, and also, by the way, Astronomic has a great customer service. I was talking with uh, one of the gentlemen there. His name is Gerd Newman. I think I pronounced his name right. If I didn't, I apologize. Uh, he's been great. I've been conversing back and forth with him for a few weeks now. Um, I've been asking him a lot of questions. He's been giving. He's been replying. They so they have really good customer service. Actually, great customer service. So, again. That's pretty much it on this filter. It's a very short review. Um, it's a nice filter. Uh, it gets the job done. I'm, I give it two thumbs up. Um, I give it five out of five stars. The construction, I mean, the the material on there, whatever it is, it's a um, glass or whatever, it's uh, very nice. And it's very solid. Uh, it's, it does do what it says it does. It blocks out all the light pollution. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever been more impressed with a a filter than I have with this one. So, and again, mind you, I've only tested one other filter out, and that is a UHC filter by a third uh, third party company. Uh, I think it was called Solmarks. I spent like, um, I think it was like $20 on it. It's a cheap one, but it I didn't take pictures with it because I only have it for the eyepieces. I put it onto the eyepiece, and then I just observed the night sky. It did its job, and it's good. Uh, but if you're going to do imaging and stuff, you really do, and if you're using a DSLR, uh, I would definitely go with a filter, especially something like one of these. Um, they do get the job done. It's really, really nice. And again, I think once you see the pictures, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, it definitely blocks out the light pollution. Definitely made the backgrounds darker, like it said. It definitely brought out the contrast of the images, the, the objects I was shooting. It also made them sharper and brighter, so I think it was very, very nice. It was, it, again, if I had to buy another one of these filters, I would for sure. I'd do it, I would do it in heartbeat. It was very, very nice. It was, it was worth it. Uh, they do stand by their products. They have a very good warranty. Uh, that right there alone tells me that, you know, they make good products. Um, so with that being said, it's uh, really good. It's a, it's a nice uh, filter. Uh, it fits right in. You can use this with lenses as well. It doesn't affect any of the settings like autofocus and things like that. You just clip your lens on it and it still works. If you're doing, again, astrophotography, um, you can do it two ways. You can do the projection method, uh, putting your little adapter on with the eyepiece inside, or you can do it like I do. I always shoot prime. Most of the times I won't use an eyepiece and do the projection method because I really don't like that doing it that way. I, I'd rather just use my telescopes as the actual lens. And what I do is I just unscrew the whatever adapter I'm using, if it's the 1.25 or the 2 inch, and then I just screw on my T-ring on here, and then I snap my camera into the place so the camera would be basically sitting onto the telescope. And that's kind of what I do. Uh, again, there's really not much to know about this filter outside of that it, it's, a, it's a light suppression filter. It blocks out light pollution. Um, if you want full technical specs, I'll pre pretty much put that in the description or I'll send you the link. I'll put the link in there as well so you can read it all. Um, and once you see the pictures, you'll like I said, you'll see it does exactly what it says it does. So uh, two thumbs up for, you know, and I definitely recommend this filter. Again, if you're also using a DSLR, if you have a full frame, they sell it for the full frame as well. Uh, so, and it's not a bad filter. It's actually a really decent filter and yeah, I definitely like it. Uh, it gets the job done. And 
I'm now also hoping to be able to test out a bunch of other air filters as well, like the UHC and maybe the H Alpha. I want to try a bunch of filters and, like I said, kind of get some reviews out there on, on these products too, so people can uh, have a look see, you know. So, and that's pretty much it. So, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and share my channel. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Um, I will also put their company link in the description, so you can also contact them as well. Uh, and that's pretty much it, so clear skies. When you adjust the filter to fit into the camera, you take the flat screwdriver, put it in between there, turn it just a little bit so that spring comes out. Same thing with the other side, just got to do a little bit, turn it outwards, and that's pretty much it. snapped into place. Real simple.